What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I want to talk about numbers and math in Python. Alright, in the last video we talked about strings. In this video we want to look at numbers, sort of the next item on our data type list numbers and also a little bit of math. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos and books for a one time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so numbers, we already have kind of an idea what numbers are They're numbers, yeah, you know what a number is, but there's different types of numbers, there's integers, there's floats, all kinds of stuff. So what am I talking about? A number, I should say an integer is a whole number. So like 10, that's an integer. 10.25 is a float. Notice the 0.25, the decimal uh, afterwards there, it makes it a different type of number for Python. And Python treats those two different types of numbers differently. So for instance, we could create an, a variable called num and set it equal to 10, right? Now if we want to print out num, save this, pull up our terminal and run it, it prints out 10, right? What if we need this to be a float? Well, it's it's been entered in as 10, we can change it to float by running the float function. You see what we've done here, we've just wrapped this whole thing in the float function. So if we save this and run it, we get 10 point zero. Now it's a float, it has a decimal behind it. And this is going to be obvious why we would want to do this in just a second when we start looking at math. But we can also do the opposite, pull this back up. Let's say we had 10.25 as a float, right? And we wanted to turn it into an integer, we could just run the int function, right? Same thing, we just run this function. And this is what the function looks like. Right? And if we want to run it on num, we put num inside of it. If we want to print all of this to the screen, we just, you know, so that's what that code is. So save this and run it. What do you think is going to happen? It started out as 10.25. We've changed it into an integer. If we print it, it just gets printed out as 10. So important to know the difference between integers and numbers because of basically math, right? There are times when this becomes important, especially with division, and we'll see that in just a second. So speaking of math, we can do math in Python incredibly easy. We can use numbers, we can use variables, doesn't really matter. So we could go, I don't know, seven plus two, right? So if we save this, run it, boom, we get nine, seven plus two, right? We can go seven minus two, save this, run it, we get five, right? Very simple. We could go seven times two. That's the little star key. It's uh, shift eight on my keyboard, whatever it is on yours. Uh, so if we save this and run it, should be what? 14. 14. And then we can also do division. So let's go 10 divided by two. We save this, run it. It's going to be 5.0. And notice it, it converted to a float on its own because almost all the time when you do division, you're going to have decimal answers, right? So for instance, if we went 10 divided by three, right? It doesn't, re that's not a whole number. That's 3.33333 or something like that, right? So if we save this and run it, you'll see right off the bat, 3.33333335. So that's why knowing the difference between integers and floats is important. Anytime you're going to do math, you're going to come up with decimals and you may want the decimal, you may not want the decimal, you may want only a certain number of decimals behind the decimal point, you know, this is 3.33335, you might want this rounded to 3.33. You can do that. We'll talk about that in a future video. So those are the main kind of math things. Let's look at a couple more, slightly more advanced. So let's go five to the power of two, you know, an exponent to the power is two multiplication symbols, right? So this would be five times five, right? I guess that's 25, I think. Right, so if we went five to the power of three, that would be five times five times five, which is what, 125 maybe? My math is not fantastic, 125. So that's how you do exponents. 
There's one more I want to tell you about. This is called the modulus. And that is the percentage sign. So let's go 10 modulus 2. And the modulus returns the remainder. So in this case, 10 divided by 2 is 5 with no remainder. So this will return 0. If we save this and run it, we get 0. On the other hand, if we went 10 divided by 3, 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. 10 minus 9 is 1. So 3 goes into 10 3 with 1 left over. So the modulus returns whatever's left over. It should return 1. If we save this and run it, we get 1. Now, you may not have ever heard of a modulus before. Most people haven't. But surprisingly, you'll use this a lot. You know, if I want to see if a number is divisible by another number, I'll use a, a modulus. If the modulus returns zero, I know the number is divisible by that other number. If it returns any other number, I know it's not divisible. It has a remainder. It has something left over. So, you know, with programming, so often you, you do so much math. I mean, programming is a lot of math. So, you know, using things like the modulus, like the exponents, you're going to actually use those from time to time. And uh, so it's cool. So down here, I've been using numbers. You can also use variables. If we went num1 equals 5 and num2 equals 2, and then we went in here, num1, um, what? What do we do? Times num2. You know, we could do that too because these are numbers, and you can do numbery things even if they're in a variable. So if we save this and run it, we should get, what, 10? I hope. <laughs> 10. Very cool. So one last thing I want to talk about is order of operations. And you probably learned this back in grade school, maybe early high school, something like that. But order, order of operations is important. So let's go uh, 4 plus 1. Let's put some spaces in here. Uh, times 3. Right? Let's get rid of these. So what do we think the answer is this? this one is going to be is it going to be 4 plus 1 is 5 times 3 is 15 or is it going to be 1 times 3 is 3 plus 4 is 7 so what do you think it's going to be if we save this and run it we see the answer is going to be 7 why is that order of operations in it, this is not a python thing this is a math thing in math we have something called order of operations you can google that if you want Order of operations means it's the order that you do your operations, obviously. But basically, it shakes out to multiplication and division are more important than addition and subtraction. So you do those first, right? There's it's, It goes further than that. You can Google it if you want. But most of the time, that'll get you through. Now, one interesting thing is you can break things apart with parentheses. And in the order of operations, parentheses are more important than multiplication and division. So in this case, you would do this stuff inside the parentheses first. And it always goes left to right. So 4 plus 1 is 5 times 3 is 15. The answer to this one, if we save it and run it, should be 15, not 7. And boom, we see it's 15. Basically the same thing, it's just we stuck some parentheses in there. So order of operations, super, super important. And, uh, you know, you can Google that if you want to learn more about it. You probably learned about it back in school, but like me, forgot, and uh, just sort of refresh your memory on that. And so that's basically it. We have integers. We have floats. You can convert a thing from an integer to a float. Now, when we did that, we went, you know, num equals 5, and then we went, you know, convert this to a float like that, right? You could do the same thing with strings. And with you, know, you could turn this into a string. We could go str num. And now this would be turned into this, which is a string, right? There are times when you might want to do that. There are times when you might have this, right? So let's go this and let's turn this. Now, num is a string. We cannot do math on a string. We've already learned that. But we want to do math on this. So what we can do is convert this to a integer. So let's try this. Let's go print. Let's wrap this in quotation marks so it gets done first. 
order of operations. So we're going to convert this to a number, which should be hopefully five, and then multiply that by three. So let's see if this works. It should be 15. Boom, it is 15. Let's do the different number. Make sure that's right. Six. So six times three is what? 18? Boom. Now, on the other hand, if we just use num and tried to multiply num by three, num is, an in, is a string right now because we wrapped it in quotation marks, remember? So if we save this and run it, we get 666, which is obviously not the answer. What is it doing here? It's taking the string six and multiplying it by three. We could also go John. And it'll put John, John, John three times on the screen. It's not doing math. See, John, John, John. That's kind of neat, right? Uh, so if you want to convert a string into an integer, you can just run the integer. You can convert it into a float. You can convert it into anything you want. And that's pretty cool. So that's math. Those are numbers. There's more to it than that, but that'll get you through most of it. And uh, pretty good. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.